Welcome to EndoClub 2020 on the Endoscopy Campus. We show the case of a gastric emptying disorder in a 56-year-old female undergoing G-Poem by Thomas Rush. Here you see how the stomach is visualized with uh, quite a few residual fluid. This is a gastric pull-up after esophagectomy. We now pull back to the anastomosis with some clips and inflammatory changes with superficial ulcers due to reflux. And uh, we go back. into the antrum which makes a curve and the pylorus is up here so this is the direction the endoscope has to take and also the channel has to take around this curve the uh, pylorus itself in uh, motility disorders is difficult to assess it's not always narrow like um, with poem if you push a little bit you then see the uh, sphincter which actually looks like in any patient and now we pull back with a, a distance cap a conical distance cap we see the pylorus again and along the greater curvature we uh, leave some four to five centimeters for the entry site and start injecting we see the bleb bluish bleb with a blue saline and then we start with the triangle tip knife and start the injection into the mucosa from proximally to distally as we can see and here is the opening with the bluish submucosa and we uh, carefully open this up a little bit but then we check the distance to the pylorus again here we have the entrance and try to enter with a cap we have to do some additional dissection of submucosal fibers to fully open up the entry and if we do that we will be finally able to wiggle the instrument in with the cap so here we are and the direction is upwards we do some reinjection to enlarge the submucosal space to accommodate the endoscope it takes a little while till we have enough space to be in the tunnel and do not slip back here are some uh, vessels which we have to coagulate if we hit them and here we see the muscular layer the circular muscular layer at the bottom of the image the vessels uh, are treated by soft coag but these vessels are basically too big for coagulation with a knife we have to take a coagulation forceps and here we see the new RDI function of the new olymposcopes where the vessels are a little bit better seen here we are with the coagulation forceps coagulating the vessels you can also dissect with the forceps step by step in areas with uh, vessels and then here is the full channel 
upwards, upwards, slowly upwards, and uh, here is uh, some motility happening, some submucosal fat, and then we proceed further, and we think this is uh, already the pylorus, which is shown by the fact that uh, there is a downwards direction after the pylorus of the submucosal tissue, you should not go too far because there is a risk of perforation of the mucosa. We add some injection fluid, but uh, I think this is really the pylorus. We also check this from the inside that the uh, bluish injection is uh, down to the pylorus. So this is the stopping point for gastric poem, unlike uh, esophageal poem for echolasia. Uh, we do some dissection very slowly, coagulation of vessels, like here. Very slowly, very cautiously, with uh, the soft coax setting. And this is the end of the tunnel dissection. And to explain what's going on with gastric poem, we ask Hans Alescher from Garmisch, what is uh, the situation with the pyloric muscle? Professor Alescher shows a cross section through the pyloric uh, area. Here is the submucosa, the circular muscle layer the myenteric plexus, the longitudinal muscle layer, and this is a transverse muscle called the pylorus, like a circular muscle ring. These are blue stripes, blue fibers, tissue fibers. This is an uh, enlargement of the picture. This is uh, the network of the interstitial cells of Kajal regulating the gastrointestinal motility. This happens at a different frequency in the stomach and in the duodenum, with a lower frequency in the stomach. And these two areas are separated by these uh, blue fibers. It's a kind of an isolation, because otherwise there wouldn't be an independent working of both areas. Here we see the pyloric muscle. It's not homogeneous, it's not roundish. The main part is at the major curvature. Therefore, it makes sense to do the poem cutting at this uh, side of the gastric stomach, as you can see here. So we now go back uh, with a knife in place. Here we look at RDI again to visualize the submucosal vessels. And this is TXI, an enhancement of texture, color and brightness, which uh, might be a new form of white light. Now we exit the knife and start slowly cutting the pyloric muscle, starting the myotomy very cautiously, step by step, layer by layer. We are using a Swift Coac, a special setting of Irby Company. Wait uh, for the uh, motility to relax. Not too deeply at the beginning, but layer by layer. And here we get deeper and deeper. Still circular muscle to be seen here. Uh, we add 
to get a little bit more space and uh, separate the muscle. Here is the most distal part. We pull back and continue the cut. As you can see here, layer by layer again, the outer longitudinal muscle is there to stay as we have seen in the schematic drawing. Again, we pull a little bit and uh, continue dissection here to the most distal part very cautiously to save the duodenal submucosal tissue to avoid perforation into the duodenal lumen. The distal extension or the extension to the proximal side, they are less than with esophageal poem. But uh, the second question to Hans Alisha, how do we control the effectiveness of what we are doing? Because it's not uh, reliable to measure motility. So what do we do? This is a, a problem, the diagnostic assessment before and after an intervention. Uh, sometimes you see this endoscopically, but this is not typical. There are other tests to do that. The patient had Botox injection. And I want to highlight the endoflip uh, test, which you can see here. This is a planimetry of the pyloric muscle. The distensibility and the diameter of the sphincter are determined. This is a test uh, which is still to be established, but we have two very recent studies. One only as an EPUB uh, publication this uh, summer. They're showing that uh, these parameters, cross-sectional area, balloon pressure and distensibility can be determined. And this can be predictive of the success of G poem. So you can measure this uh, before and afterwards, whether these parameters have changed. And this might be the test of choice, but we have to wait for further results. Here you see uh, the final result of uh, the sphincter cutting. This is uh, the end result. The muscle is cut. We uh, pull back through the channel and what we do next is uh, closure of the entry side using large clips. Due to a different angle, this is a little bit uh, different. Here you see the pylorus, which seems to open more widely, but uh, as I said, this uh, is not to be assessed by endoscopy. Here we open the clip at the proximal margin or slightly distally to the proximal margin and uh, then we uh, shoot the clip if we have the impression that's in a good position and then we continue uh, step by step with further clips adapting the mucosal margins we press a little bit and close so again both margins are adapted and then we continue with further clips, which have to be large enough to be able to grasp the two sides. And this is the continuation of the clipping, as you can see here. And we need a final clip to prevent reopening by gastric motility. So this is the final clip at the proximal margin or slightly proximally to it as you can see here the clip is closed slowly and 
we fire the clip and this is the follow-up of the patient no complications after the procedures and clinical follow-up is not yet long enough to assess effectiveness